Hey, welcome to the video today. I'll be going over basic trig identities. So the objective today is that you, you should be, by the end of this video, at least be able to use the eight basic trig identities and use those to simplify a few expressions involving trigonometric functions. So let's go ahead and go. Um, make sure you write these things down, take a look at these examples, and we'll get, we'll get going here. So here are the first of the eight. Oh, here are the eight basic identities. You should write, you can write this down as a table in the format that I have here, uh, or you can just write them down. But you want to be able to identify the names and where they come from. So these are the Pythagorean identities. These come up all the time. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. And these actually come from the unit circle. So if we thought about the unit circle, we would know, we know from previously that the cosine is the x value in the unit circle. And the sine is the y value in the unit circle. And the radius of the unit circle is 1. So back a long time ago, hopefully, maybe sometime, you saw conic sections and you, or in geometry, you found the equation of a circle. And this was the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Or you can think of the right triangle in the unit circle. This is the radius of 1. This is the x-coordinate. And this is the y-coordinate. And we can get x squared plus y squared equals 1. So they, it comes from x, of course, coordinate is the cosine. And the y-coordinate is sine the radius. So these come from the unit circle. We can take and find 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, cosecant squared plus 1 equals cotangent squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. We can use the first one to get the other two as well. The reciprocal identities, we've gone over these in the past. So you kind of already know that secant is 1 over cosine and cosecant is 1 over sine and cotangent is actually 1 over tangent. It's a reciprocal of tangent. These are called quotient identities or sometimes called ratio identities because they're the ratio of two things. The tangent theta is the sine over the cosine. The cotangent is the cosine over sine. And you've seen those before. So hopefully make sure you are referencing these in the examples that I give today. So let's take a look at some examples. We're looking at simplifying some expressions. All right. So let's take a look at example one. Secant theta times sine theta. So there are really four strategies for attacking any of these problems and they work for most there are lots of different ways you can do these but really it comes down for mo for the most part of using four strategies today I'm really gonna look at one uh, for this one and then I'm really not gonna use that strategy again for the other examples because like I said there's so many ways to do it but we'll look at the first strategy then in part two I'll do the next three strategies so the first strategy is turn everything into sine and cosine so I'll write it here strategy one change to sine or cosine Okay, so we're going to change everything else to sine and cosine that's not a sine or cosine, like a secant. So secant, secant, however you want to pronounce it, tomato, tomato, secant is 1 over sine. So this is 1 over sine, theta. Remember that theta is just a Greek symbol we use for angles, times sine theta. Then look at that. Ooh, what happens? We get a well, you know, some teachers don't like to cross things out because really you're simplifying out, but you know, I'm gonna go and do it. And we get one. All that and the answer is one. Yep, the answer is one. That's it. We simplified it. We simplified it down to one. Let's take a look at another example. One minus cosine squared x. So remember that we have our our number one gosh this guys this is like the number one most important one is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x or you can write it down cosine squared plus sine squared because that's the way it was written in the beginning is equal to one it's the basic 
Pythagorean identity. All right, whoa. What if I just subtract, use a little algebra here, I subtract cosine squared from both sides. What do I get? I get sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. Look at that. That's right here. Well, that must be equal to sine squared. Done. That's it. I'm done. I got one sine, one cosine. That's what I'm trying to get to. So I'm trying to simplify it. If you wanted to, you could substitute. You could, you could do the sine over here and then substitute 1 minus sine squared for cosine squared. But this works. This is quick. Let's take a look at another one. I told you guys, these aren't that bad. You're using a little bit of algebra. But you've got to remember that you need to use the identities, the eight identities that I showed you just a second ago. So let's take a look. Tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta. Well, I know that 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. And I got that from a Pythagorean identity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and substitute it for secant squared. Sorry, secant squared. Uh, that brings up another point, you know. These Pythagorean identities work for squares. They don't work for just one. Let me show you here. This is a mistake that I see so often from so many students. 1 plus tan theta must be equal to secant theta because it works for the square. Uh-uh. Doesn't work for this, okay? It can, oh, works for the square, yes, but not for when it's not squared. So don't make that mistake. Please don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. All right. So tangent squared theta minus, we're going to substitute in. Got to put the parentheses here. Don't want to mess that distrib distribution up, okay? All right. So now I'm going to distribute the negative. And then look at that. Tangent squares. Now this can cancel out, right? It's a plus and a minus. And I'm left with negative 1. Done. That's it. Simplified, guys. That's it. That's all it's simplifying. Um, and that's as much as I'm going to talk about. Okay, those, so those are some easier ones. Tomorrow in my second video, I'm going to go over some more difficult ones and the three other strategies that you'll want to use when you're attacking these types of problems. Here's a couple of practice problems for you. If you want to take a look, try them out. You should. Try them out and take a look at the, uh, the ones, um, the answers from the WISC on the WISC link down below. Here's another one for you. Let's see. Hopefully, I can get this in the screen here. I'm going to let you off with what's behind me. I'm going to say I'm done. If you can get this joke, that means you know how to simplify things. All right. Catch you later, guys.